Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on Visual Basic and today we're going to be discussing classes and this is a pretty uh, significant topic if you're going to be going into any sort of object oriented programming which we're going to be discussing as well just a bit. Now what exactly is object oriented programming? Well basically that's you the programmer uh, instantiating what are called objects uh, that have these certain characteristics about it. It can be a little controversial. Some people might define it, define OO programming a little different than others. But basically, there's these certain characteristics that distinct them uh, from like an object-based programming language that doesn't allow you to do many of these things. Uh, for an example, um, polymorphism and inheritance. We're not going to be going over that in this tutorial. Uh, but other things would include like modularity, which is the ability to write out your series of functions and procedures uh, that will be inside this class we'll be creating in a separate file so it's not visible. There's abstraction, which is where you get the data from that file. And uh, another thing that we'll be learning as well is encapsulation, which is basically keeping as much as we can inside that object from being visible from everywhere else in the programming language because well you don't want hackers being able to you know mess with your program or you know just or just kids trying to find exploits you, you don't want that kind of stuff but it all makes sense as we uh, get into this so let's um, well let's basically what, what kind of class should we create uh, what should it be about well my idea was let's create a class that's called salary and basically what will happen is it'll just ask you to type in your salary and inside this class it'll start dedu deducting all these different taxes oh yay how exciting right taxes so let's uh, right click your uh, solution name go to add class and class should already be highlighted and let's call it salary ah so as you can see it's a separate little uh, file here just like a module uh, that's why um, one of the things is called modularity. Uh, a lot of programming languages don't uh, allow you to create modules the way they do in Visual Basic. Uh, so you can really use either. You can use modules instead of classes, really. But but then you can't create objects with them, though. So that's the only really difference. But uh, yeah, let's do this. So uh, in this particular class, what we want to do before we start making our series of functions and procedures is to define some constants. I'm just going to create two for now. Um, I'll call it private const and tax federal as double. And let's set that equal to 15%. Let's create another constant. Oh, whoops. Oh, and as you can see, well, I'll get an encapsulation later. But there's a reason why I'm declaring all these variables as private. And uh, I'll discuss that later. Hopefully I can finish this all in one video. That would be a... Uh, because I really don't want to go to another video. Okay, so we just have a couple constants, and obviously you'll need everything that applies to a certain person there, but there's way more taxes than this. But uh, let's just keep it from here for now, just keep it simple. And let's create the one and only subroutine that we're going to have in this class that will be public. So just type in public first, and then a subroutine, and basically everything that we want to have happen inside our class will happen inside this subroutine. So let's call it balance, since we're going to be finding out what our final balance after all the taxes are. And is that it? Yeah, that's it. And we're going to be passing in, from our other form, we're going to be passing in our salary. So by val, and we'll type in salary as double. So that's going to be our little parameter. And then in here, let's uh, create a variable called price and what I would like to be able to do is as this class is calculating all this information for it to print each individual amount of money that we're paying for each tax as well so this one variable price will actually change over time uh, so let's just set it as double and set the default to zero and then uh, and dim final budget this will be the variable that pops out at the very end of everything that will have our final calculation 
So we'll want that to be equal to salary, because we want it to start off, start out as whatever we start with. So we're going to be passing any number, and then we want the final budget to start at that number, and over time we'll keep subtracting uh, from whatever we have. So we can't set price equal to anything yet, because we need to start creating our individual functions. So our first function, now notice how this one's going to be private instead of public, is, let's, uh, what do we call this, uh, tax federal cost? I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm making some of this up as I go. I don't, I don't know. And we'll need a return of value too. And we'll be passing in whatever our salary is. Salary as double. And we're going to want to return whatever um, well, whatever we're going to be paying. So type in return. And this is why we made constants, so we don't have to hard code this in. So first we'll type in the salary that we'll be passing in times, and then the tax federal. So instead of just typing in 0 0.15, we can just type in tax federal. And what this allows you to do is, if you use this multiple times within your program, any time the federal uh, income tax changes, you could just change it here at the very top, and then it will apply to all the times you use it down, down there. So that's really, really nice. And let's just copy this and paste it and let's do it for the state income tax as well so salary right there or no I don't want to change that this is state there we go I think that's uh, pretty much everything and then up here let's set price which is originally zero equal to the first function which was tax federal cost and we'll be passing in salary so whatever we type in, we pass that in. And we'll actually want to pass in... Oh, wait, no, we don't want to pass in a string yet. I'm looking further down my notes. Yes, uh, for bigger examples, I do write out notes to make sure I don't mess up. Okay, so now we have price will be equal to whatever our salary is times the federal income tax. So price will now be equal to exactly how much we're going to be paying for our federal income tax. So now, I'm going to actually, for every tax that we create, I want a message box to pop up that shows us the tax, or I mean how much we'd be paying for that tax. But do I want to just keep writing out message box dot show, uh, you know, every few lines? Nah. Let's actually create a uh, procedure. Let's have that one be at the top, actually, above all these other taxes. So, private subroutine and let's call it display cost and by vow price as double I hope I spelled everything right and all this should do is message box dot show and price dot to string should be first followed by a string which we'll be editing in a moment Oh, come on. Dot OK. So, uh, this will display the price, how much it's um, going to cost us. So, right down here, I'll type out display menu. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to pass in uh, whatever it cost, which we determined with this price inside this function. So, I'll type in price dot to string. But how are we going to distinguish each message box from the other? How will we know which, you know which one it's talking about? If it's talking about state income tax, federal income tax, property tax, union fees, all the utilities, you know, your Verizon bundle. I mean, who knows? Social security. Goodness gracious. There's just so much stuff. So after each one, you can manually type in each uh, one that you're talking about. So in the second parameter that we're going to be passing in in the display menu for this one, federal income tax. That will never change. So we don't have to worry about that. And it's underlined because uh, we don't have a second parameter for our display cost or display menu. I'll just change it to menu here. 
display menu. There you go. Okay, now this is underlined because we don't have a second parameter. We have price, but we don't have our second parameter, the string. So by val and what should we go? I'll just, I'll just call it tax as string. There we go. And now both will be passed in. Then the last thing we need to do after each little group of tax that we uh, calculate is to, to subtract our final budget, whatever the previous number is. So right now it's our full salary minus whatever we determine the tax to be. So final budget minus equals and what was it? Um, price. There we go. And then basically we have to do all this again for the state income tax. So now the next one will be the state income tax. So I'll change this one to state. And then I'll change this to state income tax. And final budget minus price. Uh, that should be pretty much the same. And then let's do a final just to see what our final budget will be after every all, all these taxes. I oh, know this is only two. This is nothing. So we'll have display menu. And then our pieces of parameters that we'll throw in there will be what is it? Final budget dot two string. And I don't know, I'll just call it end budget. I don't know. Just what, what, how much money you have left, basically, or your final balance. You can call it whatever you want there, just so you know what it, what it is. So I think this should be everything. I mean, only two functions for, or two functions for two different taxes and everything. But uh, this should work. So now we need to actually create our object because, well, we have all this code here, but it doesn't do anything until we actually create the object. So go into our form here. Let's create a simple button. Let's call it btn citizen down here. Just call it citizen. I don't know. Uh. And I'll double click this. And before we do anything inside the button click event, let's uh, event handler. Let's uh, just go up here and actually create. Oh, excuse me. Our object first. So first, let's type out the private keyword. And then after this, let's type in citizen, since that's just, you know, because anybody can use this application. There's no specific name for anyone. As new, and so you're using the new keyword because you're going to be instantiating our new object here. The name of our class goes next. So, uh, what was it, salary? I don't know, I can't remember. I already forgot. So that's new salary. Now, in order to refer to each object that we created, we've only created one citizen inside of our button you go by whatever we called it so we called it citizen dot then notice how balance is the only subroutine that we can see none of the other data type or variables that we created are visible none of the uh, just nothing is visible we can't see uh, where is it we can't see our private constants that we created up here we can't see any of these other private subroutines or functions that we created and that's encapsulation right there basically is to make it as least possible for you know just people exploiting your program so balance is the only one that can be seen now oh man I'm running out of time I can almost do this all in one video so let's create a variable up here called salary set that equal to input box um, enter your salary. Uh, I don't know. Input required, and uh, the default value is zero. Let's create a another variable salary slash conversion. I would just call it conv. C convert it to a double, and salary. Uh, and salary. Okay, let's see if this works. No. Dot balance salary. What I do? As double. Oh, salary dot a uh, salary underscore con. Save. Let's run this application. 
I click citizen. Enter your salary, 100000 So 15% for our federal income tax, so it's 15000 6% for that. So 15000 plus 6000 is 21000 So now we'll get the 100000 that we typed in minus the 21000 And that's pretty much how classes work. Um, goodness, I have less than 10 seconds before I'm over the limit. But uh, I hope this was useful for you, and there will be more that I will discuss in the next video.